Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to address a question by Art Hess, W9SOL. And he says, Hi Dave, hope this isn't a redundant question. Um, no, it's not. I mean, uh, every, I think every question that could be asked has been asked, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, every question that could be asked has been answered for you. So let's take a look. I have a 12 by 20 steel building that I want to use for a ham shack. I'll be using a copper pipe mounted along the wall as a common ground, which will be bonded to two ground rods installed at the building. I'd recommend a ground rod directly outside your shack in addition to that, and then bond that to the two other ground rods. The ground rods are attached to the sub-panel in the building. Now, this is important here. Neutral is not bonded to ground in a sub-panel per local code. There is only one place in an establishment, even though there might be more than one building, like outbuildings and so on, and that is there's only one place and that is at the electrical panel where uh, the, the meter box basically where the electricity comes into the building that is the single point at which those are grounded okay um, so uh, don't worry about that that is uh, normal I have plenty of space for antennas and tall pine trees oh I wish I had tall pine trees I got little tiny short pine trees uh, so no problem with antenna placement. Should I expect RF interference issues with HF and VHF rigs inside the metal building? Well, you're not going to be able to transmit inside the metal building from an antenna. So if you've got a handheld, it's not going to work real well. You're going to need an outside antenna for UHF and VHF as well as HF. Okay. Um, it will act as a Faraday cage. It won't necessarily improve performance or anything like that. Now, when you bring your, uh, I'm just going to draw a little picture. Let me back this thing out so we're looking at the entire whiteboard. Um, you've got your building here, um, and it's made of metal, okay? Uh, lots of buildings are, are made like that. You see them really often out here in the west um, where they are outbuildings and are, are made of metal. Um, it's just the common way of doing things. So um, you've got your station in here and you're sitting here you know doing your thing. There should be a ground rod right here. Bring your antenna lead-ins to there with the lightning arrestor and then go into the shack okay and then have your shack ground go out to that ground and then this ground will be bonded via number six copper bear stranded wire and clamped clamp connectors you can get the clamp connectors at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or someplace like that or if you are a little leery of it, talk to an electrician. He'll tell you what to do. And then the building itself is grounded. Uh, if it is not, ground it. Um, there may be, in a lot of these buildings, a so-called oofer ground. An oofer ground is a long... Um, what do they call those? Rebars. It's a long rebar and it'll stick up somewhere inside the building. Make sure that that is grounded to these other grounds also. Okay, so I think that answers your question, and Art, you should have a great station there and a lot of success. So, thank you all for watching. If you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by going to decastlercom support, which lists several ways of doing that. And uh, please subscribe. It uh, really helps out uh, with the YouTube statistics and helps in, encourage YouTube to recommend this channel to more people. And until we next meet, 73.